Am I the butthole for letting my son operate the self-checkout? I took my son with me to the grocery store today. He is seven. I am a big believer in learning by doing. I like to give my son as interactive a role in things as possible, and if he wants to do something himself I always at least let him try unless it's unsafe. When we got to the self-checkout he confidently told me he could do it by himself, so I let him. There are about 10 self-checkouts and one line for all the machines, so people don't line up behind individual machines. He was a lot slower than I would have been, but he managed to do it all with my supervision, even the produce. As we started to wheel away, a woman walked up and slammed her grocery basket on the counter. She said, thanks for doing that as slow as possible, but whole. I thought that was incredibly rude and uncalled for. Some people are slower than others. It is what it is. There were several other machines being used and freed up, so we can't have made that big an impact on our wait time. Edit based on OP's response that the store and line were quite busy, everybody sucks here. You should have let your son help with a few items, not all of them, or taken him at a less busy time so you're not inconveniencing others. INFO, was there a long line waiting for the self-checkout machines? Learning by doing is great, but there's always a time and place for things. Edited. Given your replies to others make it sound increasingly like the place was pretty busy, changing to everybody sucks here. Using a busy time on Sunday for a learning experience was inconsiderate on your part, but that woman was technically talking to your son, so. Nice person, that. Am I the butthole for forcing my son to use a bidet and threatening to talk to his friends or take him to the doctor about his underwear? For some reason my 14-year-old son cannot wipe properly. This was never a concern to me as his mom did the laundry. Unfortunately she is sick right now so I have taken over the household chores that she used to handle. My son is still responsible for his and I do mine as well as hers. First day I did laundry I gagged and almost puked from his underwear. If he were three and not fully potty trained I might understand how they end up like this. But he is a healthy young man. He should not be leaving his ass this unwiped. I talked to him about it and he said he would make an effort to do a better job. Nope. No change in the situation. So I went to the hardware store and installed a wand bidet in the bathroom he uses. We already have one in ours. I told him that he has a choice of either using the bidet or washing his own underwear. He doesn't know how to use the washing machine and he refuses to do them by hand. He started going commando. Which just meant the problem was his jeans now. So I said that we might need to take him to the doctor to see what is wrong with him. If it's physical or psychological. I also said that the next time his friends were over I was going to ask them as they left their underwear in the same condition. I would never actually embarrass him like that. He said I was being in butthole and he called his mom to tell her what I was doing. She said that he was just like that and I could deal with it until she was better. I don't think that's a great plan. If this kid never learns to wipe his ass he will be bereft of a sexual partner without a poop fetish. I'm not king shaming him if that's his thing. He has started using the bidet but he says that it is gross and weird. I said it was grosser and weirder for a 14 year old to crap his pants every day. We are both stressed about his mom but this situation isn't because of her. I asked her. Not the butthole. 14 is a little late in life to be learning how to clean your butt after using the toilet. Your wife is doing him no favors by allowing and coddling this behavior. Not the butthole. Though you and your wife are buttholes for allowing it to get to this point. This is a severe hygiene problem and one that is likely to hurt him both socially and professionally if allowed to continue. Your approach might not have been ideal, but it is understandable. Take him to a doctor. And a therapist. Oh, and most importantly, stop washing his crafty clothing. WTF is wrong with you? If there is crap on his clothing, he gets to wash it. You need to fix this problem and also stop enabling it, yesterday. Not the butthole. You also need to tell him eventually, if it's not happening already. Other kids might start smelling it. Ask him if he even knows how to actually wipe? Maybe you need to show him how to properly do it. If he's 14 and can't manage it maybe he wasn't taught the correct way. Not the butthole for the bidet thing. But kind of the butthole for never realizing your son had an issue. Didn't he stink? Were you just never in the same room as him? Also, teach him to wash his butt in the shower too. Am I the butthole for telling my brother he has nobody to blame but himself for our dad being cold to him? My, 21 female, brother, 16 male, and I's parents are getting divorced, this isn't really a shock to either of us. Six months ago my brother asked if we could hang out and when we did, he shows me a picture on his phone. It was divorce papers he'd seen in our dad's car. I told him straight up it wasn't any of our business, made him delete the photo, 
and made him promise not to tell our parents. That lasted all our two weeks. He told our mother because he couldn't handle keeping the secret even though the school has counselors and stuff for him to talk to. Lots of drama, my mother ended up being the one to divorce him, and from what I understand got the better deal. Our father isn't taking this well. He moved into a craftier apartment than the one I share, and he's been really depressed lately. He also started to get really distant with my brother, they've only spoken two or three times since hell broke loose, and even then it was mostly just school related. I've been cold too, since it's either that or being pissed off at him. I warned him to stay out of someone else's marriage, and this is why. He called me Christmas Day, sobbing that dad wasn't answering his calls, and that he felt like a horrible son. I was out of empathy for him, so I let loose I warned you to mind your own business. I wouldn't talk to you if you ruined my marriage either. You better hope he's the bigger man and forgives you, because I wouldn't. He hasn't called me since, mom called me and is worried about him, she says he needs his sister. But I really don't care, which is why I'm wondering if I'm being reasonable here. You're the butthole. He's a child and his father has basically abandoned him. They were getting divorced anyway. Your brother telling your mother about the divorce papers didn't precipitate that. Why are you blaming him for the divorce when it's entirely your parents' faults? Are you really blaming your brother for your parents' divorce? He literally saw the divorce papers. Your parents were gonna divorce anyway. Your dad is depressed because he didn't get a better deal out of the divorce. Your brother is 16. How the hell do you expect him to handle the situation? Instead of telling him to mind his own business you should have explained the situation to him or been an emotional support to him. You're the butthole. I cannot believe you wrote all that and still thought you're not in butthole. How do you figure your brother ruined their marriage? One of your parents already had divorce papers drawn up, the other beat him to the punch and it's antagonistic enough that you're talking about who got the better deal. Besides which, you weren't surprised they got divorced. Sounds like your brother had no real bearing on their divorce so why are you blaming him for it? Seems like you're taking out your own feelings about a messy situation on your brother. Who is evidently struggling, and hasn't done anything except be honest. You're the butthole. Am I the butthole for not paying for my mom's surgery even though I have money for it? I, 35 female, I lost my father very early when I was 5 years old. A few months after his death, my mother married her a guy named John. John already had two teenage boys and he didn't want to raise me because he never wanted to be a girl's father. My mother, like a good mother, abandoned me with my aunt and took my brother, eight by the time, with her to live with her husband. John was a man with a lot of money and he always spoiled my mother and brother, but he never bothered to get me even a Christmas present. My mother didn't do anything for me either, she came to visit me once a month and didn't even call me at Christmas or New Year, I always called, but many times she didn't answer. My aunt was a woman who couldn't have children, because of that she and my uncle raised me as if I were their daughter, not missing anything for me. Even without much money I accumulated some money from my job I had during high school and I earned a small amount from my aunt which was enough for me to pay for my college. At the time I graduated in computer science and went to work in a good company earning a great salary, but 8 years ago I received a much better job offer in a large company, one well known for having great hardware products. In that time, I accumulated a lot of money and helped my uncle and aunt renovate their house and I always sent them a nice amount even if they told me to spend it on myself. I currently live alone in a great apartment with an estimated value in the millions. Recently my mom called me on my Instagram, I post a lot of pictures of trips and fancy places I go, it's not too hard to find me. She asked if we could meet to talk and reevaluate our relationship to forget the past and move forward as mother and daughter. I have a soft heart so I took it, I thought it would be an opportunity for us to talk and finally create the bond I always wanted. We made an appointment at a restaurant downtown and met there. When we got there she hugged me, kissed me on the cheek and said she missed me. We talked about my life and when I asked how hers was going, she started to talk about how bad she was. Apparently she divorced John and my brother didn't want to keep her as she is now poor. To make matters worse, she lives on a pension from John and has serious heart problems. After a while she asked if I could pay for a surgery she needed. The surgery was quite expensive, quite a lot. I told her I wouldn't pay as I wouldn't feel good doing that. She yelled at me in the middle of the restaurant, said I was a terrible daughter and that I was letting her die even though I could pay for her surgery. I left there very embarrassed. When I told my aunt, she said it was my decision but remarked that I have plenty of money to pay and that it wouldn't affect me financially. I don't want to do this cause she never have been a mom to me, but I need to ask. Am I the butthole? Edit, English is not my one degree language so maybe I have misspoke something. Not the butthole. She abandoned you, you don't owe her a thing. 
I'm calling bullcrap on the heart problems by the way. The fact she abandoned one of her children demonstrates she has no heart. You're better off without her. Not the butthole. Your mom didn't want a relationship with you. She wanted your money. And she would have expected you to support her for the rest of her life. Am I the butthole for not going to my husband's funeral to support my children? My, 63 female, late husband, 64 male, and I have four adult children. The youngest is 23 but the rest are in their 40s and all have children and families and live far away. My eldest lives over 400 miles away. My husband recently passed away, fairly unexpectedly. He wasn't ill to our knowledge and died from complications resulting from his diabetes, type 1. Thought 64 is seen as old it is shocking and tragic. I am not a funeral person. My mother was a huge hypochondriac when I was growing up, in this day and age she would be diagnosed with some sort of mental disorder I expect as she was never really with it when I was a child. Multiple times a week my entire childhood up until I was 13 or 14 I was dragged to funerals of strangers. Every funeral my mother saw in the paper or heard about from friends she would take me and my siblings too. Even if it was completely inappropriate to be there. She'd lie sometimes if it was an intimate funerals. We were cousins of the deceased or the family of their dead friend. We'd spend hours there doing nothing at all and to be presented with death so much as a child was quite emotionally distressing. Many funerals we went to had open caskets as we lived in a quite Catholic area. It haunted my dreams as a child. A long time before he died my husband told me once, offhandedly, that he wouldn't be offended or upset if I didn't go to his funeral as long as I mourned him in my own way but he still wanted to have one. Before his funeral me and my children shared a meal and they assured me it was okay not to come and their father wouldn't be upset and they just wanted me to do what was best for me. After the funeral I received angry emails from friends and relatives of my husband's, especially his mother, who is in her 90s, saying I completely disrespected my husband and I abandoned my children who were inconsolable at the funeral and traveled all the way for it just to be let down by their mother. My children have told me that I have nothing to worry about, that they weren't crying because I wasn't there but the emails keep flooding in. Calling me selfish and telling me I'm letting my entire family down and asking if I really loved my husband. It's very distressing and I'm wondering. Should I have sucked it up and gone as a courtesy to my husband's family? Am I the butthole? Your husband said you didn't have to go. Your children said you didn't have to go. Not the butthole. Not the butthole. You have a traumatic history that your late husband and children understood. The fact your late husband gave you his blessing to miss his funeral trumps all. Anyone reaching out to insult you needs to get a life. They know nothing about the situation, and those kind of people probably aren't even worth spending the time to clear the air with. Not the butthole. Your husband gave you the gift of telling you a long time ago what he wanted for himself and for you, so that if that day ever came, and unfortunately it now has, you could be just a little more at ease. He both wanted a funeral, and also wanted you to be as comfortable as possible, not to be further traumatized while already grieving. He understood and supported that you would not attend. It's clear he loved you. Your children understand and support that you would not attend. It's clear how much they love you, too. The only people whose opinions matter are on board with you. These are third parties whose business this decision isn't. They certainly don't get to speak for your children who have assured you both before, and after, that they're comfortable with your decision and understand the reasons why. Though I understand that these other people are also grieving, you may safely dismiss any bullcrap coming from busybodies presuming to speak on your children's behalf, including your mother-in-law. Am I the butthole for bringing up the reason why my cousin and his wife separated after he joked about my personal life at dinner? Edit, Grammar. ETA 2, his kids are 20 yo, daughter, and 19 yo, son. I, 36 male, was born in a very uptight family. This happened last week at my cousin's Jack birthday dinner. I live in another city about a two-hour drive from my hometown. I decided to take my good friend Tom with me for the party and my cousin said it's no problem. Tom and Jack know each other pretty well. Tom is openly bisexual. Some people in my family have openly voiced their concern about Tom being a bad influence on us due to his bisexuality, which I find disgusting, to be honest. Over dinner, Jack announced that he had proposed to his GF and she said yes. Everyone cheered. I congratulated him and felt genuinely happy for him. Everyone used to tease me and Jack a lot for years for being single. I have perfected an ability to completely ignore them when they ask me questions about my personal life. But last night after Jack's announcement, my oldest cousin Peter decided that it was the right time to mock me again. Peter is the only son of my mother's oldest rich sister. He's a manipulative bully who always gets his way because his parents have been spoiling him rotten all his life. 
His wife dumped him last Christmas when she found out he had been cheating on her with his co-worker. At one point during the night, Jack playfully asked me, my name, why are you still single? Aren't there any girls here pretty enough for you? Don't be so picky, dude. I just rolled my eyes at him. And then Peter decided to chime in. He said well that's the problem. He's not interested in pretty girls. He's interested in pretty boys. While throwing a sideways glance at Tom, whose face immediately turned red. Everyone was now turning their gaze at Tom so Jack tried to fix the awkward situation by redirecting the attention back to me, which I didn't mind. He said oh, no. He likes girls, alright. Trust me. I've seen him getting really wild with girls at parties before. This one's a maniac. And rather than leave it at that, Peter decided to double down, saying yeah but maybe he's changed his mind. Who knows, after spending years in the city hanging out with those hom s, maybe now he likes boys too. That's when I decided I'd had enough. I said even if I were gay, that's none of your business. Why are you so obsessed with my dick and what I do with it anyway? I didn't go out of my way to say anything to you when you used yours to cheat on your wife twice, did I? Because that's none of my business. Things escalated quickly from there. Peter, his kids, and his parents left immediately. I half dragged Tom out of there because he was already telling everyone how sorry he was and that he shouldn't have come. Now Peter and my aunt demand I apologize to them for bringing up Peter's infidelity at dinner and humiliating and hurting them, especially his son and daughter. Now the kids know he's the reason why he and their mom separated and they are extremely upset and are giving him the silent treatment. Am I the butthole? Not the butthole. He's being a straight up homophobe and it's disgusting and someone needed to put him in his place. If he's upset at you for simply stating his past actions, his issue is with his actions Macron underscore Tsu, Macron. Not the butthole. Holy crap does Tom deserve significantly better than to be surrounded by this group of people. You were pushed and they were shocked that you pushed back, especially in defense of Tom, and yourself. Good for you for sticking up for him, and yourself. Not the butthole. Ever hear the phrase frick around and find out? Looks like Peter fricked around and found out. Not the butthole. No. Do not apologize. Am I the butthole for yelling at my pregnant fiancé for eating and drinking the last bit of food and water we had? Long story I'll keep short. My fiancé's sister has a prescription drug problem. She dipped out for two weeks and ended up in another state. She called her mom in the middle of the night, begging her to come get her. Fiancé's mom didn't feel safe traveling alone and asked if we could help. For multiple reasons, we decided to leave early the next morning and drive. About three hours away from our destination, we broke down and of course in the dead center of absolutely nowhere with a cell tower on AOL dial-up. We took my truck, which is about three years old to actually prevent something like this from happening, go figure. It ended up being a simple blown fuse but actually locating a replacement was the problem. My only option was to start walking to either pick up a signal and or flag someone down for help. I walked close to five miles before I hit some sort of fish farm. Someone there graciously gave me ride to find what I needed, then drove me back to my truck. After putting the new fuse in, because of course why not the battery was dead. My fiancé was hot and had the key on to have air being pushed on her. Yes, I was irritated. Luckily, I always carry a battery charger. But it is slow as hell and took an hour to get it enough charge for the engine to turn over. What happened next, pushed me to my limit. We had brought a small cooler with six waters, a couple cans of coke, some snacks in between stopping for actual sit-down meals. It was all gone, not a single bottle of water left. What did my fiancé say? I really need to pee. To be clear, I was thirsty as hell but I wasn't even worried about myself. Her mom has hypoglycemia, she had the shakes, she wasn't feeling good. This was not something we needed to happen along with the already miserable day we were having. I said something to my fiancé about drinking and eating everything to which she said, I was bored. I could not find this woman's mother anything. Not even a crumb, not even a sip of water to take a pill. I couldn't get the truck started either of course. Out of frustration, I yelled at her for eating and drinking everything. I was nervous thinking things could turn worse. I arrogantly asked, just how entitled and selfish can you be not to set aside your own mother something when you know of her condition? She turned things on me and said I should have brought them food and water back. But I literally went to a fish farm and auto parts store, plus I didn't know she was going to consume everything we had. My fiancé's response. I'm three months pregnant you butthole. Her mom kept insisting she was okay. I could see in her face she was not. Finally the truck started, seven miles later I find a gas station to get the poor lady some sugar and a drink. I'm still disappointed with my fiancé, 
if she doesn't care about her mom how am I going to know she'll care enough for our child? She still says I'm the butthole though, for yelling at her. I don't know how many times this needs to be said but, being pregnant doesn't equal entitlement. Her mother could have been in serious trouble and she selfishly ate because she was freaking bored. Not the butthole. And pray she's not like this with the kid. Not the butthole. You were in a very difficult situation doing the best you could under terrible circumstances. Your fiancé, pregnant or not, is a selfish person. Her bored excuse is beyond lame. Your fears about your child are well-founded. Start thinking about custody now. Not the butthole. Contrary to popular belief, pregnancy isn't an excuse for everything. Not the butthole. I thought I would be calling you one, however your fiancé's attitude is pretty gross. Out of boredom was her excuse? She's an ah. Am I the butthole for causing a scene at my surprise birthday party? Hello. I am a 34-year-old male. My GF is 28 years old. Yesterday it was my birthday and my GF threw me a surprise birthday party and invited all of our close friends. There was probably 20 people there and it was hosted at our apartment. So at some point she pulls me towards the dining room table to open presents. One of the presents was something that I always wanted a gaming laptop. The specs were so insane that she probably dropped 2500 plus used on it. When I pulled her aside to our bedroom and asked her how much she spent on it she was like don't worry about it honey I love you and want you to be happy but I wasn't going for it and thought she was trying to show me up in front of all our friends. When she tried to kiss me I pushed her away and said why do you always try to flex your money on me. So we got into a huge shouting match in front of all our friends and I finally left. I got a text from her this morning asking if we could talk and haven't replied to her cause I don't know what I should say. It's important to note that I don't make a lot of money and grew up poor and she grew up with money and makes a lot because she's a doctor. Reddit, am I the butthole cause I ruined the evening for everyone involved? Wheel, aren't you just a giant bouquet of red flags, toxic masculinity, outdated gender roles, massive insecurity, temper tantrums, ungrateful, immature, fragile male ego. Edited to add judgment, you're the butthole, you can add that to the bouquet of red flags too. Wow. Thank you for the updates and the awards. I've never been top comment before. You're the butthole and ungrateful. But I wasn't going for it and thought she was trying to show me up in front of all our friends. Holy insecurities. Dude how is a gift showing you up? You don't deserve the gift, or the girlfriend who gave it to you. Am I the butthole for loaning my dill something that will one day belong to my daughter? My daughter is 17, and I told her a few years ago that when she turns 21 I will give her her grandmother's pearls. She is my only daughter, and I think my mom would want her to have them. I didn't want to give them to her right away though, because I was worried my ex would take them from her. She was fine with waiting until 21 and very happy that I promised them to her. They are, however, still mine. My son's wife, then fiancé, asked to borrow the pearls for their wedding as her something borrowed. I agreed and loaned them to her. My daughter saw her wearing the pearls and asked when they came back from their honeymoon if it was the same set. Dill confirmed that it was and said she had borrowed them for the ceremony. She returned them before they left for their honeymoon. My daughter asked me why I loaned them, and I said I thought my mom would have liked being part of her grandson's wedding. My daughter said she's hurt I loaned out her pearls without asking. I told her they aren't hers yet, but they will be one day. For now, they are mine and I have a right to loan them out. She asked if she could have them now because she doesn't trust me with them anymore. I told her no but I compromised and said I would give them to her for her high school graduation next year, when she will be 18. She agreed to the compromise but is still miffed. Does promising to give someone a gift mean I lose rights to it prior to the gifting? I didn't think so, but what are your opinions? I think your mom would have liked to know that her pearls were worn in her grandson's wedding. Your daughter is being unreasonable. I would suggest holding off on giving the pearls to her until she is 25 or 30 to allow her to grow up more. My daughter knows that she will inherit my house one day, she doesn't think of it as hers right now and knows that I could decide to sell it someday. I am not obligated to treat it as her property for the rest of my life. Not the butthole. Not the butthole. They are still yours and you can absolutely do with them what you choose. Family heirlooms are typically well used. Also it's not like you loan them to a casual friend. You loan them to your daughter-in-law for her wedding. 